Alright guys, welcome to your 15th computer networking tutorial, and in this video we're going to be going over the last topology. Now, I say this is the last topology because it's called a mesh topology, and it's not the last topology, because of course you can just go ahead and have, you know, unlimited number of topologies, and there's also, you know, like a star ring topology and different topologies where basic topologies are mixed together but this is the last main one that I'm going to be teaching and uh, in the next couple tutorials we're going to be moving away from layouts and moving into something a little bit more interesting but for now I want to go over this topology let's say that we have uh, let me just draw like five PCs or something a PC here a PC there a PC everywhere PC and you know it doesn't matter if these are you know desktop PCs or laptops or anything like that and you actually need more than um you need three or more for this mesh topology to work out but this is basically what it is it's a topology where every single node is connected to every other node so this let me just draw it real quick um let's see what else this would be connected to this this to this and of course so I think if I draw it like this, then this blue thing is of course Ethernet, and as you can see, every single computer in this network is connected to every single other computer. For example, if you look at one, this one is connected to this, 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 and this. So it's very clear to see exactly what a mesh topology is. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the good parts and also the drawbacks of this network. Now the good part is, let me go ahead and change my color to red. The good part is, let's say you have a cable that breaks right here. Well, since all of these PCs provide, or should I say, are all connected, your data is provided an alternate route. So instead of going the data going directly to this PC, if these two computers want to communicate, it could go to this PC and then go to this PC. So again, like I said, your data has an alternate route in case you know a cable breaks or a node goes down or anything like that and that's kinda cool because it has built-in protection now another thing is that even though more nodes maybe you had another PC and it's connected to the system PC it would get more complicated it's actually beneficial for some reason and that is because the more nodes equal more communication paths so let's say that I don't know this cable went out right here and also this PC went out right here so the data couldn't go from here probably easier if I draw it like this from here to here well if this PC went out then your data could still go from here to here or from here to here so on and so forth so actually even though when you add PCs it would get more complicated as an entire network it would also provide more communication paths now those are some good things but let's go ahead and talk about some bad things as you can see there is lots of cable in here 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 and whenever you have lots of cable that means that this is going to cost a lot of money so it's very expensive to set up a mesh topology especially if you have a bunch of different computers a bunch of different nodes another thing is that you know when I talked about NIC cards NIC well typically if you put you know let me see if I still have my star example uh, let's see like in this star example right here this where's my drawing this PC right here would only have to have a NIC card with one port in it because it only has one Ethernet cable going to one router so of course one cord and that would mean only one port in your Ethernet card but for here let's go ahead and take a look at this PC for example this would need um, a, a NIC card that had one, two, three, four ports. So the more computers in your network, the more, or should I say, the bigger NIC card you have. So in this example, each PC needs an input for four cables. So of course, a more expensive NIC card. So that's another reason why it's going to cost more money. Because and also, whenever you expand, you're going to have to put a new NIC card in, get more cables, so on and so forth. So that's the good and that's the bad. Basically the good is it has a lot of built-in protection and a lot of different paths of communication that the data can go through. But the bad part is it's expensive because you need a lot of cable and you need NIC cards that can input a lot of different 
cords or you know handle a lot of different Wi-Fi so overall I would say that typically in your home network this usually isn't in LANs at all because it's very complicated you're gonna often see this in either MAN or WAN because this is really good for you know big fiber optic networks because they can all communicate to each other and of course you don't want to set up you know your big worldwide AT&T for example doesn't want to set up their network where if one station goes out in California then the entire you know internet doesn't shut down so that's why they have a lot of different you know checks and balances because of course with big worldwide networks it's a lot safer and also in worldwide networks they wouldn't use ethernet they would use fiber optics or these cables right here would be something that could handle a lot more data so that's basically the benefits of a mesh topology and well that's all the topologies like I said that we're going to be going over in this little tutorial series but I just want to point out that typically in a network you often have a hybrid topology like a mesh bus or a star ring is a very common one so uh, anyways I'll shut up now in the next tutorial gonna be going over something very interesting so I'll see you then